three, two, one. Welcome to the show. All right. Welcome to the show. This is kind of reminiscent of the summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jerry's back in Boston. Yep. And I hope my dad uh, wrapped the house up for the summer and uh, we'll be back down in Virginia next weekend. Is it pretty chilly up there? Uh, it's actually pretty similar to, to the weather down there right now. I mean, it's probably low six, high 50s, low 60s maybe. Uh, really nice day out here. So you're not yeah. freezing your butt off. <laughs> nope, nope. Now give it a give it a month or two. It'll be uh, yeah, crazy cold up here. But spicy. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Let's get into it. What you got for right. us this week? Uh, we got a pretty timely show, I think. Uh, TSP Weekly Update Show, twenty three October, twenty twenty two. Um, so what we're going to talk about is what causes a bear market rally. Uh, arguably, we are at the very beginning stages uh, of what a of, of a bear market rally that's that's quite possibly going on right now. Um, and we're going to talk about, you know, kind of the the stages and how it's it's likely to roll out. Um, we talked a, quite a bit about the 200 week moving average, uh, I think last week on the show. And we're still banging around that 200 week moving average line. Um, if we lose support there, then things change. But you know, historically, um, I think we did a chart back to 1980 last week and showed that every time the price came down to that 200 week, 200 week moving average line, it got support there, except for 2001, uh, 2008, and then that, that overshoot in COVID. So we're right back at that line again. And that's one of the things that um, kind of supports this idea that we get a, a bounce. Um, and so the other thing is sentiment. There's a really good report that just came out on Investopedia, and we're going to go through that report. It, it talks about um, sentiment and kind of how that works and some really interesting stuff we're going to take out of there. Then we're going to kind of look at how, what the chart shows to how do, how do we validate the beginnings of this bear market rally. And then we'll take a look at the TSP fund charts. Okay, so the next several slides are going to be Nope, sorry. This is from the street.com. Uh, the link is there. It was an article that I took off the street.com. Uh, what is a bear market rally? So what causes it? Bear market rallies, right? They're called a sucker's rally, uh, among other things. Typically the product of bullish sentiment on the part of risk tolerant investors and traders. Okay. So it begins with risk tolerant investors and traders. Okay, so after prices have fallen sharply for some amount of time, like they have since the top in uh, January 2022, once prices fall for some significant amount of time, uh, eventually the panic selling starts to subside, right? People stop selling um, and they stabilize, right? At that point, investors who aren't afraid of taking some risk begin to buy back into stocks hoping to establish a low cost basis in order to maximize future gains. So what that means for us in terms of TSP is, is this idea that, you know, we're buying stocks cheap. That's what, that's what that sentence means. There, there are investors that come in and they say, okay, the market's down, you know, in this case right now, it's down 25%. Um, now's a good time for me to get back in because I'm getting in at a cheaper price. Okay. So this influx of buy orders can drive prices up temporarily, right? For a few days, weeks, months. Um, but if if momentum isn't sufficient, right? So momentum is when people really start to look at it and say, okay, um, the technical indicators are in place. Um, the, the, the momentum behind this move is real. Okay. It's not just people that are, are jumping in trying to trying to day trade. It's it's real. If momentum isn't sufficient, um, then market-wide concerns about overvaluation, which is the, the fundamental issues that are that are still overhanging the market, right? Those fundamental issues once again come back um, and begin to startle risk-averse investors, who may sell to avoid additional losses, right? Uh, Jump-starting another wave of, of bearish sell-offs. So basically, that's what we've seen all year so far. Um, the market hits a bottom. We get a few days, maybe a couple of weeks of a rally, 
only for it to roll over because the fundamentals are horrible. But we keep getting to these levels where people are willing to to risk it. Um, and that's what generates these really brief rallies because momentum isn't isn't taking hold. So the market rolls back over. Okay. This is a really interesting report from Investopedia. Um, sentiment. Okay. Investor sentiment, sentiments on thin ice, uh, amid rate hikes and swoon in stocks. So aggressive rate hikes and posturing by the Fed in an effort to bring down inflation and uh, the return of the bear market for equities have contributed to the most pessimistic sentiment among investors all year. Okay, the most pessimistic sentiment, according to this uh, study, uh, a, a survey, okay, it's a survey which we're going to talk about what that means, uh, a survey of our daily readers. So it was fielded from September 20th to 27th. So it's it's very current, right? Captures readers' concerns uh, and, and investing intentions, okay, intentions amid a steep decline in both equity and bond prices that has brought the S&P to its uh, you know, lowest, lowest levels all year, down 23%. That was a couple of weeks ago. So the methodology of the survey Okay, again, it's a survey. Uh, it was online to Investopedia readers 18 years and over in the US uh, from September 20th to the 27th. So readers must have um, currently hold and manage investments to qualify. So you ha actually had to have, you know, quote unquote, skin in the game, right? Uh, participation is voluntary and it's only in the US and for 18 years and older reader base. So it's a survey, okay? So people are expecting more losses, okay? The market's at a bottom when they're doing this, right? The last week of September, it's at a bottom. And people are expecting more losses, right? According to uh, nearly half of the respondents, 47% expect additional downturn of at least 5%, right? The largest proportion of respondents uh, predicting declines all year um, and a 15 percentage point increase from the survey they did in August. So only 10% of readers expect markets to rise 5% or more. Over what time frame? Not, not really sure. But the, the gist of this is, uh, the question they put out, what do you think the S&P 500 return will be over the next six months? So 47% of the survey say that they think the market's gonna be down more than 5% over the next six months, okay? Relatively low, right? 10 and 8% think it's either gonna be flat uh, or up more than five percent. So what are they? What are they worried about? Right. The concerns are inflation, which makes sense. We've been talking about that for over a year. Um, a recession. You can't turn on the news and not hear about how we are either in a recession, depending on how you uh, define it, or we're going to be in a recession. Or everything. All the talk is about recession, and obviously interest rates are rising. Right. Every time the Fed meets, it's going to meet again in November, whether or not it raises another 75 basis points or pulls back to only 50 basis points. Um, rates are going to go up again in November. And then all these other things are not too high on people's concerns going forward over the next six months. Um, I would argue that inflation, everybody knows about. Recession, everybody knows about. Rising interest rates, everybody knows about. Those are the things that are already priced into the market. It's the things down here that... Did we lose you, Jerry? This is... Uh... Just keep rocking this and rolling. This is going to be kind of key. Yeah. You, you, you this, wanna... this deflation is... Can you hear me? I went away for a second. Yeah. You I can hear away. you. Can you hear me? Yeah. You just... Everything okay. just went blank. Oh, that's weird. Are we back on? We are now. Okay, good. Um... You didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Keep rolling, buddy. Okay. So so uh, it's, the, it's the things down here, you know, that that people aren't too worried about that I'm actually concerned about. Um, deflation probably being the biggest one because uh, there's a lot of arguments that once we get past this inflationary period, um, deflation is a much bigger monster that's looming. But 
in the survey of investors, you know, deflation was barely even barely even there, ten percent. Uh, so I think that's going to be interesting going forward. Uh, but we'll we'll see how it how it rolls out. Okay, so investors seek safety amid concerns, right? The wall of worry is prompting nearly half of our respondents to choose safer investments, uh, a trend that's been underway all year. Makes sense because the market's been going down all year. More than a third of, of respondents say they're investing less in the overall market, which is a slight increase from the survey they did in August, right? Among those, invested, among those investing less, 76% say they still believe the market has further to fall. So there's a lot of bearish, um, you know, a lot of pessimism in how people are thinking in this survey, okay? 44% say they are investing less because they fear a recession is coming, right? So readers investing less anticipated further dips. Um, why are, or yeah, why are you currently investing less? I feel like the market's gonna fall further. That was the biggest one, right? Worried about a recession, huge. Um, I'm, I'm contributing to an emergency cash fund. Right, so instead of investing, I'm putting money in savings, which is probably a good thing. Um, so this is what people are doing with their money. So what does that mean? Um, for us, it's like not not the core amount you have in TSP. It's the amount that you contribute every every payday. Okay. So this this part of it, right? This whole piece kind of goes to the idea of what you're doing, how you're investing now, not what your core uh, investments that you already have in the market are doing. Okay. This is new money. This is new money that we're putting in the market. So this talks about money that's already in the market. So people are patient, but optimistic, right? Despite their concerns, most respondents, 63% say they are waiting it out and willing to show some patience and discipline amid the market sell-off. Yet 47% feel like the market slump is a buying opportunity and are buying the dip. Only 15% claim to be selling stocks at a loss. So, okay, let me just finish the slide. So most, most readers choosing to wait it out the market volatility. Um, are you doing any of the following because of the recent market volatility? I'm waiting it out, 63%. Buying the dip, 47% are actually buying, right, they're buying the dip. Uh, selling stocks and taking profits, only 16%. Okay, selling stocks at a loss, 15%, and, and none of the above. So this is what people are doing with their actual core money, right, that what they're actually doing. 63% are leaving their core money in, and maybe changing new contributions, but they're leaving the core money in as the market falls. And 47% are actually buying the dip. So if they were in, you know, the G fund or had, had money in a money market account, they're investing now and, and trying to buy the dip. Um, so what I'm trying to point out is this, the difference between sentiment and how people feel and what they say about how, what they think is going to happen going forward and what they actually are doing with their money. Okay. So when when they say that that, that the sentiment indicators um, generally refer to what people how they feel it's sentiment as opposed to what money managers actually do with their money right so there's still the bottom line is there's still a lot of people that have not bought into a real bear market because if you really thought we we're in a bear market you wouldn't be waiting it out and you certainly wouldn't be buying the dip you would be selling stocks and taking taking your profit or your losses, whichever, because you think the market's going to go down significantly further. And so on the one hand, a, a very negative sentiment can generate uh, a bear market rally. But the reason it's a bear market rally is because in reality, people are waiting it out. They think that ultimately it is going to go higher. And until this number changes, it's it's a bear market rally as opposed to a real new rally. Okay, if that makes sense. So the sentiment indicators are good uh, because they show very, you know, when the, when conditions are oversold and people are very pessimistic and all that, that's when bear market rallies happen. But 
the real bottom is going to be when <laughs> there are, you know, 10 to 20% of people that are actually waiting it out. Because everybody has thrown the towel in and said, nah, I, I can't take it anymore. That, that'll right. be the actual bottom. That's when everybody is just like, you know, I give up uh, you know, completely, right? That's, that's when the real yeah. bottom hits, right? Right, right. So that's, that's the, the difference. And it's, it's, a, it's a really big distinction because one of the things that um, I, it concerns me, actually, is that most people right now are looking at, okay, I'm down 25% in my account um, relative to where I was at the all-time high. If you are still thinking about what to do, how to make reallocation decisions based on where what the value of your account was in January, you are absolutely missing the boat. Uh, you have what you have in your account now. The value of it is what it is. Yep. If you are mentally still comparing that to what it was in January, uh, you're going to miss, you're, you're going to take the, the, the continued drawdowns and you're not going to be in a position to take advantage of any of these bull market or bear market rallies that happen. Uh, it's 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 more of a way of looking at it, a way of getting your mind around it than, you know, actual tactical trading. But if if you are st if everything in your mind is still relative to where, however much you had back in January, um, it's mentally not the place to be. Okay. We're still on this Investopedia um, report, which it's 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 so interesting. Um, so cash is king. Uh, cash savings, top respondents list is what they would do. So if they had somebody gave them an extra ten thousand dollars right now, um, twenty percent of readers would choose to just hold it in cash. Right? It, this is the first time since since the August twenty twenty one that cash savings topped the list ahead of buying individual stocks or ETFs or whatever. So people would actually save the money, put it in savings rather than buy ETFs and stocks. 15% um, of respondents said they're actively putting money into those products right now. So, um, okay, one in five readers would keep extra cash if they had, you know, somebody gave them an extra $10,000. But interesting thing is, if you had an extra $10,000 right now, where would you most likely put it? 20% say they would put it in savings. I would say that's probably a great idea. Um, only 11% say they would pay down debt. So I, I found that really interesting because I've, I see all these reports about how, um, you know, as as this, we call it a recession, let's say, let's say we're in a recession and layoffs are have certainly already begun in some sectors, but, uh, and apparently credit card debt is really increasing. And so the idea that, this really recent report shows that only 11% of people say they would pay down debt if somebody gave them $10,000, I, th I think is, is remarkable. It, it basically says that um, people aren't that worried about accruing more, more credit card debt, for example. 10% um, of people would put it in ETFs, basically the same as index funds. Still 17% of people said they would buy stock with it. Um, Bonds are at a historic low. So if I was going to buy anything and, and you know, not using technical analysis to, to, to buy things, if I was going to buy anything because it was really cheap, bonds is what I would buy. They are unbelievably historically cheap. And you only get 6% of, of uh, respondents saying that they would buy bonds with an extra 10 grand in cash. Um, gold also and Bitcoin. All, I mean, all the stuff is really historic from a historical perspective. Um, cheap. So if that was your, you know, your rationale, these are the things that I would think would, would be much higher than, you know, 6%. And the idea that 17% of people at this point in the, in the game are willing to take 10 grand that somebody gave them and put it in individual stocks is astounding to me. It basically goes to this idea that, yeah, people are pessimistic and, and all that, but not really. You know, not not really. When the bottom comes, this will be zero. <laughs> if somebody gave you an extra ten thousand dollars, the last thing you would do is buy stocks. Right. Okay. So, how do we kind of validate um, that this bear market rally is in place? Uh, we had a question on Facebook about a short 
short squeeze and, and puts and calls and how, how that all works. And I'll do that on a different show, but I'm going to just kind of briefly talk about it here, the short squeeze idea. Um, and then momentum, if, if uh, cause we said risk tolerant investors come in, uh, put in a, a, a bottom, and if momentum doesn't continue on, um, then the market rolls over. If momentum does continue on, then you get a bunch of people that say, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, the market's up 10 or 15%. Um, I need to get back into it. And that's FOMO, right? That's, that's retail investors jumping back in saying, oh, I, I missed the bottom. I'm getting back in. I, I'm, I have fear of missing out. Okay. So how, how do we know where we are? Um, sentiment trader, really interesting a uh, couple tweets. It's worth following those guys if you don't already. So he says, in 22 years of doing this, none stand out like this one, like this chart, right? So uh, this is from September 7th. Last week, institutional traders bought $8 billion worth of put options. They bought less than $1 billion in call options, okay? So a put option is a bet that you think the market is going to go lower, okay? A call option is a bet that you think the market's going to go higher. So as of September 7th, that week, the, the volume of put buyers is three times higher than what it was at the low in 2008. So at the low in 2008, everybody thinks the world's falling apart. Um, you know, the, the great financial crisis is, is happening. Uh, if if um, the Fed, what was it? The Treasury Secretary goes, goes to Congress and says, if we don't, you know, bail everybody out. Um, the whole financial system, as we know it, is going to fall apart. Like there was every reason to believe that the market's going to go lower. Uh, and yet now there are three times more people betting that the market's going to go lower than there was back then in 2008. So it's, it's, it's very extreme, right? Um, and these are people actually putting money into it. It's not sentiment. Th these are actual traders buying these put options. And the, the, the thing they don't talk about in this chart, which I think is interesting, is up here, this is call options. So at the top this year, everybody was convinced the market was going higher, right? So here's where we are right now, or as of September 7th, um, an historic amount of people thinking the market's going to go lower, right? It's, ex it's, it's extreme, but it was also extreme on the positive side at the top in January. So same guy uh, or sentiment trader retweeted this guy's Jason uh, Gopferts uh, tweet. At the height of panic buying today, so this is October 13th. This is last Thursday, okay? So last Thursday, um, more than 45% of all securities on the New York Stock Exchange traded on an uptick, okay? There's a, a lot of things happened last Thursday, um, but that's the second highest amount in, in at least 25 years uh, on the day after the S&P 500 set a 52-week low, okay? So this idea of short covering. Um, last Thursday, the market gapped down like 2.5% at the open. It went a little bit lower, but by the end of the day, it finished up 2.5%, right? It was a huge short covering day, okay? So what, what happens there? Um, how can 45% uh, of all the securities trade on an uptick. Like obviously everybody didn't wake up that day and say, all right, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy stocks today. It's algorithmic trading. At at some point in there, the computers decide that, you know, things have gotten to a certain level and they they flip and they and they all buy. Uh, and that's that's the majority of, of how stocks are traded now. It's not people sitting down looking at charts and trying to decide. It's the computers that do it. So these are the things that, that um, algorithmic trading is what pretty much drives the market at this point. And it's the only way that you can, you can look at, at uh, the ticker symbols. Like, you know, if you're watching CNBC and you see all the stock uh, tickers going by and all of a sudden they're all green, right? On this day, last Thursday, they were down two and a half percent. So all of them were red. And then two minutes later, they all flipped to green. It's not a bunch of people <laughs> changing their mind. It's a computer. And so what, what happens? When does that generally happen? These are, are the only times 
that it's happened, you know, since back here in 1999, let's say, right? Um, and the only, so a week later, so in 2009, we had that indicator. So what he's saying is S&P 500 after a 52 week low, then greater than a 45% um, uh, of, of all issues uh, trade on, a, on an uptick. I mean, it's, it's stats, it's like baseball. People come up with these stats. Um, 2009, a week later, the market was down. Two weeks later, it was down. But then 12 months later, it's up 43%, right? Later, so we had two indicators in 2009 where that happened. Uh, the second one, a year later, it's up 59%, right? So in all these, 12 months later, the market's higher, okay? Um, and again, it's just, it's statistics. But what it what it indicates is when it just triggered back there on a, on last Thursday, um, it, it only happens at market bottoms, right? It doesn't necessarily mean it's the exact bottom, right? Like in 2009, it triggered before the exact bottom was in place, which is why we had, um, you know, some some more short term decline in the market, right? So so these this is basically arguing that we have put in a major bottom and we're likely to go higher from here, um, and that's that is consistent with the 200 week moving average line getting support at that, um, consistent with this idea of really low uh, sentiment is very bearish, all all these things, right? So. How do we how do we actually validate it in terms of at some point we have to make a decision whether or not we're going to move out of the G fund and back into the stock funds right to take advantage of this rally at the end of the day um, nobody knows for sure if the if this is the bottom the final bottom of this bear market it could be um, and if it is the idea is to get back into the stock funds as early in that. Uh, validation as possible right so we're going to go through the the regular three-year weekly charts but if you drilled it down to a to a daily chart like this um this is the last three months of the c fund right the, the blue line is the 20-day moving average line right and each tick on the chart is one day so we put in this bottom that was that last thursday right the market gaps down two and a half percent. So we opened down here at the bottom of that box. It rallied up to two and a half percent. So we closed at the top of that box for the day. It was a huge move, right? The next day, the market uh, it opened higher, right? It opened at the top of the box and it closed down here at the bottom of the box. But it didn't take out this low, okay? So this low now becomes the, the main line in the sand, right? And then we have a we have a couple of good days and we get above that 10 day moving average line, okay? RSI isn't quite above 50 yet on the close, right? But it's close. Then we have a couple days um, and then Friday this week, we have a big follow through day. You know, we're just barely above that 50 line, but uh, this engulfing candle Right, this Friday's big candle took out really well at least the last two days of negative price movement. So on a short-term basis, if you're looking at this, um, Friday really uh, validated this idea that we are in some kind of at least short-term rally. Okay, it's possible that it it just rolls over, right? Um, but this candle really validates this idea that at least in the short term. The market should move higher. Um, if you're a subscriber to the site, we're, we're you know, we, we put out an alert on Tuesday. We got back into the stock funds, um, you know, not 100%, but quite a bit. Uh, and, we, and we got, you know, a good chunk of the gains for this week. Um, we're in a good position if the, the rally continues forward uh, with the expectation that this is not the final, final low uh, of the bear market. Again, we'll see. Um, so what has to happen is if we get some more updates, the momentum that we talked about will kick in. We'll be past this idea that the bottom is only here because uh, of, of risk tolerant traders. The momentum will kick in. And then once we really get above this, 
this high right here, uh, if we can get a, if we can get price above there, um, people will really start piling in because of both momentum and FOMO. Because um, you know, on a percentage basis, if we get up here to above 3,800, we've cleared this resistance level, um, and this is what a 10% move from the low. So from 3,500 to 3,800 is about a 10% move. And FOMO will kick in and people will jump back in the market. Um, whether or not that leads to a new you know, bull market and, and we keep making higher highs from here, uh, we'll see. But it doesn't really matter because what you have to do is get into the stock funds at, the mo at, a, at a, a level that the risk reward is worth it. So... Let's say you say, okay, if the market gets below that low, I'm getting I'm getting out. If you get in here with the expectation that the market goes higher, great. Are you willing to take this potential loss for this potential gain? That's what you're trying to figure out. And as we go forward and you say, well, I'm going to give it one more day. Okay. So you give it another couple of days, it gets above 3,800. We've cleared this resistance and now you're comfortable that the market's going to keep moving higher. Now, it, it, it could keep moving higher. That's true. But now your risk is this this much, right? Because if it rolls over a little bit, say we get up to 3,800, we hit resistance here and come back down. How low are you going to let it come down before you say, oh, it's it's rolled over and we're going to keep going to new lows, right? So, so it's a risk reward. But at some point, we will be at a, at a final bottom, and we'll we'll be in a setup just like this, because you you never know. So we'll be in a setup like this, and the market will keep going higher, and maybe this is it. There's no way to know. There is no crystal ball. So the idea is to get back into the stock funds when the risk reward at the time um, is something that you can live with. Uh, okay. So if you're not a subscriber to the to the to the site. Um, and you and you want this kind of level of analysis to help you make reallocation decisions, I would definitely um, sign up. Okay, regular TSP, week, uh, it's a, this is a three-year weekly chart. We talk about it all the time. So if you're only looking at your TSP funds, um, you know, once a week, which TSP is not day trading, so this is definitely the chart that you want to be looking at. Every time um, we get above that 20-week moving average line, we get support, right? Until January where we didn't. And ever since then, we've had a couple of overshoots, but ever since then, then the market can't get above that 20 week moving average line and it keeps moving lower. Uh, we have consistent lower highs and lower lows, right? Even here, this is a lower low. So the market is in a long-term downtrend. There's no doubt about it. In the short term, uh, can, we, can we get a bounce back up to this downtrending 20 week moving average line, can it come up to here, not get above it and continue lower? Absolutely, it's a possibility. Can we get up here, get above it, get a little bit more above it and then roll over? Yep, that's a possibility too. Or it can just keep keep on going higher. So since we don't have a crystal ball, the idea is to get in the market when it's it's again, when the risk reward is there. And so until we get back above that 20 week moving average line, we cannot have a sustained rally. Just because we get above it doesn't mean the market can't roll over again. But at some point, we're going to get back above that line and the market's going to keep moving higher. Okay, when that happens, RSI will be above 50. Okay. S Fund has a little bit of a better setup, I would argue, because um, it's got a, a very clear double bottom at 1500. So uh, if we get above that 20 week moving average line, and the S fund keeps moving higher, great. If we uh, have a close below 1500, it's it's going down from there. Uh, and RSI right now isn't a great indicator, at least on a weekly basis, because it's not anywhere near 50. So uh, it wasn't as good of a rally this week on the S fund. Um, and so there's where we are, but that's your line in the sand for the S fund right there. Um, so if you're in the S fund right now and you're, you're bullish, you wanna see the market move higher from here. Um, you definitely don't want to see a break below that 1500 line. 
I fund, um, you know, it's it's pretty much in a in a waterfall. I mean, and it and it it's, goes along with the uh, the dollar. So, in addition to watching the TSP fund charts, the uh, dollar sign USD is the ticker symbol in, in stock charts. Dollar sign USD gives you the U.S. dollar index. As the dollar goes up, the I fund goes down because companies in Europe, uh, actually anywhere outside the United States, um, it gets much more expensive for them to buy things in dollars as the price of the dollar goes higher. And that's why the I fund chart is almost the inverse of the U.S. dollar chart. And as you can see, we had a little bit of an uptick in RSI, but uh, nothing major on the I fund. It's, it's still way oversold. F fund is really what the majority of the financial market is looking at, not specifically the F fund, but the the, the TLT and, and interest rates. Um, this is the worst bond sell-off in the history of the bond market. Uh, and it's got a lot of people scratching their heads. Um, you got a one, two, three, four, five. So in terms of Elliott Wave, anywhere in here would be a great bottom for the bond fund. Um, the, in, in the big, big scheme of things, the problem is that uh, when you have five waves down, the correction is a one, two, three correction. So maybe we get that and we, and we get back you know, up here, which would be really bullish for stocks, only to turn back down and give us another one, two, three, four, five down. So um, the charts are, are definitely... Uh, in sync with what you see on the news of everything being bad. And and, and it's in sync with a, a potential relatively short-term rally because we got five waves down, we got a short-term rally to, to come back up uh, only to roll over in 2023. So in the big scheme of things, <clears throat> uh, even if we get a rally here over the next couple weeks to months, I really, really don't think that the, the bear market is over. Okay, Questions. I guess it's a little bit of optimism in the short term and, and pessimism in the long term. Um, again, I, the, I'm in the middle actually of writing the newsletter for this weekend and, and we put out the alert on Tuesday. Uh, a lot of talk about it and uh, it all comes down to making reallocation decisions for a reason and having uh, knowing when your thesis is, not that it's wrong, but know, knowing what your lines in the sand are that, okay, uh, it went against me or it didn't go as high as I thought it was going to go or whatever it is, you got to have a line in the sand to get out. Yeah. And get back in. Right. I mean, and we, we talk about that right. line in the sand right. all the time. Um, and I, I think as soon as people can wrap their head around that, right. As soon as they can say, okay, I know what they're talking about. That, that is a yep. huge click for folks because once they figure out what we mean by that, your decision-making uh, ability goes, you know, it's exponential, right? Because you, 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 and, and you also reduce your level of anxiety and fear in your emotion and dealing with yep. this. Cause you're like, okay, I, I know where I'm going to get in. I know where I'm going to get out. If this happens, I've got plan a, I've got plan B. You can just kind of make those, you, you make those decisions, you know, over the weekend sometime after taking a look at a couple of charts and then yep. go about your day. Right, and then spend the next week just kind of checking in on it. Right, once a day you check in on it and say, "Okay, yep, hit my land in the sand. I'm out," because we can only, you know, uh, move so much. So it's not like you got to watch it every hour. Um, and right. and then your life will be very simple when it comes to managing your TSP. But you know, ho hopefully that stuff clicks for you guys. If you have any questions about all of this stuff or any of this stuff, uh, you can always hit us up uh, wherever you find the comment section, wherever you find this video. Uh, you can also hit us up at support at growmytsp.com, and the support team will get a question to us if we can answer it. Uh, if we can't, they'll just sit there in limbo. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we answer the questions. Come yeah, the, the, we do answer the questions. But if it's something personal and we can't give you financial advice over email or whatever, so uh, the support team will usually let you know that. But if you guys uh, like the show, make sure you share it with your friends. You got anything else for us, Jerry, before we pop out of here? I think we are good. Uh, looking forward to next week. It's, it's gonna volatility is not going away. I mean, the market's going up and down. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think that's pretty more up clear and down. through all the analysts that you watch or see or hear. Everybody's saying volatility is going to be around a while. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's going to be, um, I mean, I, there's absolutely no reason to believe that we're going back to the, the glory days of, of 2020 and 2021. Uh, the glory if, days. If, if you watch, I mean, I mean, you know, I, we don't even need to go into the, all the, the macroeconomic problems that are going on in the world. You just have to watch the news a little bit. And all that stuff is going to play out um, going forward. It's not, it's getting worse. It's not getting better. So right. in the short term, we will have these relief rallies. Um, but in the long term, you know, so and, and in TSP, the only way really to to get any gains is to see these relief rallies for what they are and be able be in a position to take advantage of them. Um, otherwise, just sit in the G fund, which isn't a bad option either, because you're getting three or four percent a year at this point in the G fund. Yeah. And you're definitely not going down. Right. So that's that's the key. All right, guys. Well, good luck, and I uh, hope you guys, everybody's having a great weekend or, you know, and has a great week coming up. We will see you next time. Later. <laughs>